Thank you, Chairman. Um, let me just open by saying that I've been the U.S. attorney for my state and the attorney general, and Rhode Island is one of the states where the AG has full criminal jurisdiction. There are only three. Um, so I've been involved with prosecutions for a long time, and uh, I want to say that in both of those offices, we viewed capable, determined defense counsel as a real asset. Um, we were proud to be part of a process for adjudication, and we understood that effective representation for the individuals who we were prosecuting was a vital part of the system. In fact, we looked to the defense bar for hires from time to time. It's not you know, war of prosecutor against defense. It's a joint mission to a process that the world looks at and can be proud of. Um, during the course of my time as Attorney General, uh, it became apparent that we had in jail a person, indeed a police officer, previously convicted of murder, who was in fact actually innocent. And we discovered that because the actual murderer had a crisis of um, principle and came in through a lawyer to confess. Um, we found out about this, I want to say, on a Thursday evening, if I remember correctly. And we worked with the lawyer through the weekend to double check the allegations of the new uh, confessor. Uh, because as you know, from time to time, people confess who aren't actually guilty. I don't know why they do it, but it happens. So we had to eliminate that prospect. We were in court the following Monday to explain to the judge what was going on, and at a hearing the following Wednesday, the police officer was released from prison and returned to his life. So I have lived the experience of innocence. Nothing was done wrong by the state's prosecutors in that case. They just, the evidence led them and the jury in a particular direction, and the other, the actually guilty party was not known. So I just want to say that I appreciate the work that you've done to pursue those after post-conviction innocence claims. It really made a big difference to this police officer's life in, um, in Rhode Island. You have two, Ms. Morrison, you have two very complimentary letters, one from the Republican uh, District Attorney in Tarrant County, Texas, and the other from the Senior Vice President for Legal Studies at my frequent nemesis, the Cato Institute. Um, could you explain a little bit how Ms. Wilson and Ms. Neely came to have this experience of you that caused them to write these two very complimentary letters? And could I ask that the two letters be made a part of the record? Um, thank you, Senator Whitehouse. And I, I do remember the case uh, in Rhode Island, uh, the exonerated man, Scott Hornoff, is someone I know well, and, and how commendably your office responded when that very unexpected and truly miraculous confession from the real murderer came in. Um, in terms of the letters you reference, I worked with uh, criminal district attorney Wilson on a reinvestigation of a murder case over the course of many years on behalf of a client of mine named John Nolly. Um, she is, as, as you noted in her letter, a Republican uh, former judge um, and had a real commitment to seeking the truth and doing justice in that case. And I worked very productively with her staff and with her personally over the course of four years uh, until she went to court and dismissed charges against my client on the grounds that he was actually innocent. Um, and Mr. Neely uh, from the Cato Institute and I uh, came to know each other through our shared work on uh, prosecutorial accountability and reform. Um, uh, we are people from very different backgrounds but share a common commitment to due process and I'm proud to consider him a colleague. And in your view, um, is it uh, tough on crime? Does, does being tough on crime include convicting the innocent? Um, no, Senator, it does not. And given that we've had experience that people who are actually innocent have in fact been convicted, we've seen it over and over, and uh, Officer Hornoff was an example in Rhode Island. Um, in terms of being tough on crime, does anything about being tough on crime require overlooking evidence of actual innocence by somebody who's been convicted and incarcerated? Um, no, Senator, it does not. 
Well, I just want to thank you for your work in this space and appreciate very much that you are a nominee and I look forward to supporting your